What's happening guys? Keith here with your Impact Wrestling Redemption review video. So, pay-per-view finished up a little while ago. I was not disappointed. I thought it was a good show. I enjoyed it. Um, pretty much top to bottom. It was nice to get a full three hours worth of wrestling rather than, you know, other companies that put a ton of filler and video packages throughout the night where you're only getting half the time actually being wrestling. Um, earlier on in the day, Impact debuted the new titles. So we saw the new world title, X Division, and Tag Champions, along with the knockouts. Um, all great looking belts. I thought they did a fantastic job with these. I mean, granted, they were anything was a step up from the old GFW belts. And that is one thing we have finally moved away from. I know a lot of people were very annoyed seeing them all the time and waiting patiently for the new belts but we have them and i think they look great so we learned that josh matthews and don Callis will both be doing commentary tonight and i thought they did a good job overall i really enjoyed don Callis's work um he pretty much kept josh matthews in line most of the time very very little plugs like we get every week where it seems like sanjay and josh seem to be talking about other things and and, you know, promoting the Global Wrestling Network and things like that. We got a little bit of that tonight. Um, a few mentions of the new season of Lucha Underground, but nothing crazy. First match of the night was Drago vs. Aerostar. Um, this match was good to start the show. A little clunky. A couple of weird spots. Um, we had a point in the match where the where uh, Aerostar had slipped off the rope. And this actually came into play a couple times throughout the night. So I don't know what was going on with that, but... The, the announcers made reference to it a couple times as the rope being slippery or something to that extent. But um, Aerostar ends up winning the match uh, after hitting a rolling cutter, and then he slipped off the rope. I don't know what he was going to do, but then he hits a, a springboard um, code breaker for the win. So Aerostar won that match. Uh, we go backstage. Actually, it was earlier on in the day. We see uh, footage from Josh Matthews and Matt Seidel talking, and uh, Josh kind of tells Matt Seidel that he's got to spread his wings and be on his own, and he had a whole bunch of references with the cocoon and his wings and flying and the ring, and then uh, we go back to uh, the commentary desk, and uh, Don Callis is like, ugh. Somebody told me I had to do that. I'd be sick. It was funny. It was just Callis adding all of his little uh, little tidbits throughout the night. So we go back to LAX's club. I should say we go to LAX's clubhouse, and uh, Santana and Ortiz are waiting the arrival of Conan. They get a phone call. Apparently someone has attacked and, I guess, kidnapped Conan. I don't know what exactly was said, but he won't be there tonight. I mean, I, I kind of knew he wasn't going to be there after he just had surgery, so... At least they're doing something with it. Next, we have the Tag Team Championship match with LAX defending the titles against Scott Steiner and Eli Drake. So they played up the whole point of Conan not being in their corner, so I kind of figured it was going to play a factor, and it did. Um, but, I mean, uh, this match was good. I enjoyed it. I th this was better than I had anticipated, and that's always good. Um, LAX got the hot start. Eli and Steiner did the typical team, uh, heel team tactics and kind of slowed the pace down. They uh, isolated Ortiz for a bit. Santana's able to get the hot tag. He goes to work. Uh, Steiner hits some belly-to-belly -belly suplexes on Santana and Ortiz. Then he goes up top and hits Santana with a fr super Frankensteiner. Um, did not expect that to happen, and it was uh, it was pretty impressive. Uh, Steiner ends up getting thrown to the outside. LAX sets up for a double team move on Eli Drake. Santana is up top, and he opts to go for Steiner, who's outside the ring. Uh, Eli is able to wiggle his way out, hits the gravy train, and we have new tag team champions, uh, Eli Drake and Scott Steiner. So like I said, match was better than I had expected, and I was happy about that. So up next, we had the... Six-way match with Trevor Lee versus Taiji Ishimori versus Desmond Xavier versus Brian Cage versus Phantasma versus DJZ. Um, this match was exactly what we expected. Uh, a lot of crazy spots, um, good moves, double teams, triple teams. Um, eventually, we it kind of ended the way a lot of us had expected. Um, Brian Cage ended up getting the victory. He at one point went for a moonsault. I don't know. It might have been on Trevor Lee. Um, 
and he slipped off the rope, and then he went back and hit it again. He had actually gotten busted open earlier on in the match. I think it was when uh, Trevor Lee kicked him in the face, busted his nose open. Um, but, you know, we saw his his strength, a lot of the other guys' speed. Everybody looked good. Um, it was nice to see DJZ back, Desmond Xavier as well. Um, they have a lot of guys that they can do a lot with in the X Division, so I'm looking forward to uh, what they have planned ahead. Um, so we go backstage, and Mackenzie's interviewing Allie. Allie says that a lot of people, you know, wrestlers and fans, say that she is a paper champion, but she's going to prove herself tonight against Sue Young. And then we have the announced match. I think it was today that it was officially confirmed. We had uh, Taya versus Kira Hogan. Um, this match was was decent. Um, it We kind of had a few things that took away from it because halfway through the match, Tessa Blanchard showed up. Uh, she ended up coming out on commentary with uh, Callis and Josh Matthews. So they kind of had picture in picture of the match and her at the commentary desk for a good portion of the match. Um, she was threatening Josh Matthews, you know, saying that she's beaten everybody on the Indies and she's coming to Impact to prove, you know, prove that she deserves to be champion. So she is, I guess, officially a part of Impact Wrestling. There was rumors back around the time of Bound for Glory that Tessa was going to show up and nothing came about and her showing up. I think that's huge. She's a fantastic wrestler um, and a great person to have in the company because she does bring some name recognition. Um, Taya ends up getting the win, hitting the road to Valhalla. She controlled a good portion of the match with Kira getting little bits of offense here and there. But again, I think this match was basically made to transition Tessa into the company. Um, then we go backstage and Mackenzie interviews Petey Williams. Petey says that his chances of winning have drastically gone up since Josh is not going to be at ringside and it'll be one on one. And then he starts to do some St Scott Steiner math. Scott Steiner shows up and then he starts doing something. He says something about Canadian math and he starts to go into something. And then he, he talks about Petey, you know, asking about his love life with his wife and says that it was better when he looked like him. And then uh, it ends up ending by uh, Petey saying, asking Scott if they want to go to Cracker Barrel at the end. But uh, it, this was funny, trying to uh, kind of replicate what happened in the past. But it, it, it came across good, even though it was not very good. Um, and then that brought us to the X Division title match with uh, Matt Seidel defending against Petey Williams. Um, it, they put on a good match here. Uh, a little different than we had anticipated. A lot of uh, slower slower paced for a good portion of the match, but then they, you know, got into it and they just put on a really solid match here. So toward the end of the match, Seidel goes for the shooting star press. PD Williams gets his knees up. PD Williams ends up hitting the Canadian destroyer. Matt Seidel's able to roll outside the ring. So at this point they go back in the ring. PD goes up top going for a super Canadian destroyer. Seidel wiggles his way out, knocks Petey down, goes for the shooting star press again. Petey moves out of the way. Goes for the, Petey goes for the Canadian Destroyer. Seidel ducks under him, and then he kind of flips Petey and holds him down and gets the three count. So Matt Seidel retains the title. Um, what I had thought was going to happen is him retaining. Um, I actually only had two matches that my predictions were wrong, so that wasn't bad. So we go backstage, and Moose, Eddie Edwards, and Tommy Dreamer are being interviewed. Moose says that every play was a house of hardcore in football, and Tommy gives a speech. He talks about Martin Luther King, and he says that he eventually says that Eddie will get his redemption tonight. And that brings us into the six-man house of hardcore match with Team Edwards, Eddie Edwards, Moose, and Tommy Dreamer versus OVE. Um... This match was exactly as advertised. House of Hardcore was perfectly fitting. The Impact Zone was very hyped for this match. Lots of ECW chants, you know, just just crazy spots they did throughout the match. It, it was a lot of fun. Um, so I'm just basically going to go over a lot of the spots that happened. But uh, Sammy Callahan was uh, positioned on a ladder outside the ring, leaning up against the uh, apron. Moose goes in the ring, jumps, flips over the top rope, and Sammy moves out of the way. He lands back first on the ladder. It starts to break in half. Um, Eddie Edwards gets hit with the all-seeing eye onto chairs. Um, Moose and Eddie hit a double 
Team Boston knee party on Dave Chris onto tax that he had set up in the ring. Um, so Dave was Dave Chris was positioned outside the ring on a table. Moose is on the top turnbuckle and he goes to jump off onto Dave on the outside. And Jake shows up on the other turnbuckle, jumps at the same time that Moose does. He hits a flying cutter through the table on top of Dave. Um, action goes back into the ring. Um, I guess uh, Callahan had Edwards set up with the bat. Tommy Dreamer comes in with the barbed wire bat. He knocks the bat out of Callahan's ha uh, hands. Um, uh, Tommy goes to hit Callahan with the barbed wire bat. Callahan low blows Tommy, rolls him up, and they win that match that way, which I was like, wow, that, that finished for this? But then the action continued after the match because Eddie Edwards got a hold of the barbed wire bat, started rubbing it in Sammy's face. He's starting to bleed. Uh, Eddie ends up duct taping Callahan to the ropes. Eddie's beating him with kendo stick shots. Um, the ref starts to get in the way. Callahan hits him. I mean, uh, sorry, Edwards hits him with the kendo stick. Tommy Dreamer's like, all right, enough, Eddie, enough. So Eddie throws Dreamer out of the way. The Chris brothers come in. They get hit with the kendo stick. He ends up hitting uh, Sammy with another kendo stick shot. And at this point, we see Alicia run down the stage. She kind of taps Eddie's shoulder to get him to stop, and he turns around and hits her with the kendo stick, and that was it. Um, you know, EMTs, everybody comes down, doctors and scrubs and everything. And the funniest thing was that it was just a caption of them all checking on Alicia. And you just see Sammy Callahan bleeding, duct taped to the ropes, just nobody attending him to except for the referee. So this match was crazy. And, uh, you know, it, it, it was it was good. Uh, so we go backstage and McKenzie is interviewing Austin Aries. Austin Aries says that life is unpredictable, and if you want to be the best, you have to be able to react to unpredictable situations. And he says, you know, he's worried. He doesn't have to be pinned to lose his title. He feels a little backed into a corner, but the most dangerous Austin Aries is the one backed into a corner. So, up next, we have the Knockouts Championship match with Ali defending against Sue Young. Braxton Sutter was obviously in Ali, I mean, in Sue Young's corner, um, so he would get involved multiple times early on. Sue Young was in control for a good portion of the match. Um, she hits a flip dive onto Allie on the outside. Allie hits a super kick on her. Toward the end of the match, they kind of battle back and forth for a while. Braxton gets up on the apron. Allie says, is not having it. She gets up, smacks Sutter. He goes off the apron. Sue Young picks Allie up, puts her, goes for the panic attack. Allie is able to hit her with a sunset flip, roll her up. And Allie retains her championship. So after the match, you can obviously see that Sue Young is livid. Sutter grabs a microphone. And he says, I, I know you, you may, you're you mad, Sue, but I can fix this. And then he gets down on one knee and does what Braxton Sutter does and goes to propose to her. She kind of has this crazy look on her face. And then she hits him with the red mist and then puts her, a, like a mandible claw type hold on him. And that was the end of it. So that, that was pretty cool. Um, I, I did expect Allie to retain the title, so good for her. Um, I, I think she deserves it. Uh, I'm wondering if Tessa is going to be her next rival. I really think they should go with Taya. Um, they put on a good match at the Lucha Underground show, so I think that's just fitting for them to have another match. Maybe it's anniversary. I don't know. You know, Rosemary, we don't know her status. So a lot of question marks here. Um, and then we get the announcement that Slammiversary is happening July 22nd in the Rebel Complex in Toronto. So that's big. The Canadian crowds are always great. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. We got, what is that, three months away? So we got plenty of time to build to that. And that brings us to the main event. Austin Aries defending his title against Pentagon and Phoenix. So this match did not disappoint. Um... A lot of good spots here. Uh, we had Aries run toward Phoenix at one point. Phoenix threw him over the rope. He hits a Hurricane Rana onto Penta on the outside. Uh, just beautiful spot. Then Phoenix followed it up with a spinning corkscrew. He had a little trouble with the ropes. I don't know if it was actually part of his act, but it looked beautiful when he hit it. So inside to the ring, Aries is going for a brain buster on Phoenix, and then Pentagon comes in and kind of does a, a German onto uh, 
or a German on Ares, and he goes back with uh, Phoenix hitting the ground as well. Um, Pentagon hits a lung blower on Phoenix for a near fall, and then Phoenix hits a muscle buster sit out, and he gets a near fall. Ares is able to hit the 450 splash on both Penta and Phoenix. They both kick out. Uh, Penta hits the glory, gory special and package pile driver on both Ares and Phoenix. Beautiful move. Um, and then Penta hits the Pentagon driver on Ares for the win, and we have a new Impact World Champion. So um, I did not expect him to come out victorious, especially considering the fact that he came out victorious at the Lucha Underground Impact show. So that was a bit of a surprise. And the show had ended about 10.51, and I was like, or is this was probably about 10.48.49 at this point, and I was like, oh, something else has got to happen. Aries has to come out, but him and Phoenix hugged in the ring, and that was the show. So, like I said, it was it was a good show overall. I really enjoyed it. Um, so I'm interested to see where we go from here. I'm Sure, we'll have LAX and a new feud with whoever took Conan or whatever. Um, wondering what they're going to do with Brian Cage. The knockouts division's up in the air. The next person to challenge for Matt Seidel's title, maybe that'll be Brian Cage. Um, yeah, a lot of things left up in the air right now. I'm very interested to see where this world title picture goes. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the show tonight. This was my review, and until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.